and gentlemen your attention please. Welcome to Antioch Graduation 2013. Uh, there's more seating coming, so please uh, just be patient. We'll have some more chairs in here very shortly. Uh, there's a photo area for you to take pictures of your graduate uh, right here. Uh, Pamela is showing you here right where you can do that. So as your graduate's coming in, that's where you want to hang for photos and uh, get that perfect shot. And then please do keep the aisles clear on either side. That's a fire department uh, regulation. So we need to keep the aisles clear on both sides. Enjoy the rest of the music. We'll start the graduation shortly.
As president of Antioch University Santa Barbara, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and administration, I welcome you to our 2013 commencement ceremony. Before our graduates sit down, I invite them to participate in an Antioch University tradition and ask that you turn around and face our guests and extend a big thank you to your families and your friends for their support. I love doing this. It's like magic. It's my pleasure to introduce today's program. So rather than being a jack-in-the-box and jumping up and down to introduce each of our speakers, I'm going to interview, in, introduce all of them now who are sitting on the stage and ask that they follow one another uh, later in the program. Uh, please rise as I introduce you. Victoria Riskin wears many hats in the Santa Barbara community. She is a writer, a producer, and a humanitarian. She is former president of the Writers Guild of America, founding member of Human Rights Watch California, and currently serves on the International Human Rights Watch Board of Directors. She has won many awards, including the Human Rights Defender of the First Amendment Award by the ACLU of Southern California, the Horace Mann Alumna of the Year Award by Antioch University Los Angeles, and she was selected by State Assembly member Doss Williams as the 2012 California Woman of the Year. Most importantly, she is chair of Antioch University Santa Barbara's Board of Trustees. She will bring greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Antioch University Board of Governors. Norma Bahena will bring greetings from our AUSB Alumni Association after growing up in Mexico City, Norma moved to Santa Barbara where she attended Santa Barbara City College before coming to AUSB where she completed her BA and went on to receive a master's in organizational management in 2006. Norma has worked at Santa Barbara City College for many years and has made a difference in many ways, including working on the development and approval of the first bilingual computer certificate for continuing education. Dr. Barbara Lipinski is AUSB's Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. She will announce each graduate's name as they walk across the stage. Also, as the Chief Academic Officer, it is the Provost's role to recommend the candidates for graduation to the President for their degrees at the end of the program in a commencement ceremony, at which point, if I feel like it, <laughs> I will award the degrees. A bit later in our program, after our BA students have walked. One of our graduates, Brandon Maynard, will speak about how Antioch University's mission to provide education to empower students with the knowledge and skills to lead meaningful lives and to advance social, economic, and environmental justice has been manifested in his experience at Antioch University Santa Barbara. Provost Lipinski will introduce him at the appropriate time. Also on the stage with me today are Antioch University Chancellor Felice Noodleman, 
and our trustees, trustees, <laughs> rise, <laughs> and faculty. And of course, I will have further remarks a bit later, but now it's my pleasure to give you Vicki Riskin. So it's wonderful to see all of you here today. Congratulations, graduates. It's a great occasion. I'm here representing our wonderful Board of Trustees, and together we celebrate and applaud the hard work and perseverance that earned you your degree today. And since no one accomplishes anything all alone, we also congratulate the people who nurtured you along the way, your families, your friends, and your wonderful faculty. We share with them the pride and joy of your wonderful achievements. Graduating can be a bittersweet feeling of relief on one hand that all the work is finally done, mixed in with some anxiety or even excitement about, on the other hand about your next steps. You are moving on from a very close-knit family that you've enjoyed at Antioch and the caring faculty who have asked all those pesky questions and planted inspirational ideas that hopefully will echo back to you as you grow in your professional and personal lives. For some strange reason that makes little sense to me, last week as I reflected on my remarks to you, the title of a well-known book popped into my head. Charlotte's Web, a children's story. Charlotte's Web. The book opens with Fern, a little girl, who's very upset when she learns that her father plans to kill the runt in a litter of newly born pigs. And she pleads with her father to let her keep the baby pig, Wilbur, she names him Wilbur, for her own personal pet. Please don't kill it, she sobs. It's unfair. Her father relents. Soon, as Wilbur grows up a bit, he goes to live nearby in her uncle's barn where Fern visits him every day and she gets to know the other animals. But eventually, the other animals in the barn tell Wilbur the truth, that when he's old enough and fat enough, the family will kill him for the Christmas dinner anyway. That's just the fate of pigs. Poor Wilbur is anguished, learning of his inevitable fate. He loves life so much. And Charlotte, the spider, feels sorry for Wilbur and wanting to relieve his panic concocts a plan to save his life. Now, you're going to have to read the book to learn how she does it, but she saves Wilbur's life. But as the story unfolds, we learn that Charlotte, being a spider, faces her own tragic fate. When she lays her eggs, and she lays like a sack of a million eggs, it's her destiny to die. And well, she finally does. That's how it is. No one can save her. Wilbur is sad to lose his friend and has been so grateful for all Charlotte has done for him that he vows to protect her babies forever, to care for the next generation. And then the book ends this way. Wilbur never forgot Charlotte. Although he loved her children and grandchildren dearly, none of the new spiders ever quite took her place in his heart. She was in a class by herself. It's not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer, and Charlotte was both. To my mind, this is an Antiochian story. It's simple, beautifully written by E.B. White, one of America's greatest writers, steeped in the importance of friendship and caring for one another, and of building a community who look after one another, not just for this generation, but for generations to come. E.B. White also wrote, all that I hope to say in books, all that I ever hope to say is that I love the world. So as you move on, we the trustees, we hope that you will love the world in the simple ways of the story 
and that in your hearts you'll never be far away from us, and that you will continue to be part of our family and our campus and our growing alumni community of students past and future in an ever-expanding family. So we welcome you to the family of graduates. Congratulations. We're enormously proud of you. Hello and congratulations all. Uh, my name is Norma Baena and I'm here to invite you, make a special invitation. Uh, I'm a BA and MA graduate from Antioch University in 2006. I know it's been a while, so I know the feeling that you're having right now. I'm pretty uh, sure your family and you are more than excited to move on with your new, uh, your new uh, opportunities that you will have. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to you and your family members, friends who have been patient. They know how much you've worked. They know how much time you have sacrificed. And that in case of having that time for them, now you have your time for your school. Now you are, you're back to your families. And I, I want to make sure that they feel the appreciation from every, every single one of you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to have to talk to you today. I know it's very special. It's very special for me to talk to you today and to give you the, my best regards. Um, I want to share something with you, um, and I want to tell you that Antioch, I remember the first day at Antioch, uh, the first thing I've heard about Antioch was how awesome the school was, how much it would empower and build your self-esteem and I think it just did that for me and I hope it did that for you and I am here to, to remind you that uh, now Antioch has taught you how to become lifelong learners. Now you are going to be there in the community, you're going to learn that you are going to be the, the factor of change. You can be those factors of change in the community. You can promote social justice which is one of the greatest things that we have and hold as an asset at Antioch University. Today, your journey begins. It is your opportunity to be an agent of change. Let your heart guide you and find the real meaning of your life and find to find the path and the life and world that you deserve. At Antioch, students are inspired to make a different world. And one can only make a difference by never losing your humanity and by staying connected and by reaching out to others. Today, you become an Antioch alumna. And I would like to invite you to stay connected with your Antioch alumni. By, con by being part of the Alumni Association, you can join our steering committee and uh, we will be happy to see you. And we also want you to find us on Facebook or LinkedIn. Stay connected. There's a lot of uh, things that we plan for you. There's a lot of things that you can contribute as part of as an alum of Antioch University. So you can find us on uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and you will also find a great network of other alumni. So please stay connected with us. Attached to the to your program on your seat. You, there's a small gift from the small uh, the alumni association to celebrate your achievement. Congratulations on your accomplishment. I look forward to in working and spending time with you through the alumni association. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Today is AUSB's 35th commencement ceremony. And today you become part of a group of more than 4,000 distinguished alumni. I hope you will remain involved, as Norma has asked, involved in our Antioch family through our Alumni Association. 
This commencement ceremony includes the graduation of the first cohort of students from the Healthy Aging Concentration in our Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology program. And the first <clears throat> class of graduates from our Master's in Education program. I would also like to acknowledge that four of our graduates today received the very prestigious education stipends from the California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. Given that there are only five awards for the entire Central Coast, the fact that our students receive four of them indicates not only how exceptional our students are, but it also demonstrates the overall quality of an Antioch education. I am sure you are experiencing a great deal of emotion today. When standing at the threshold of the new opportunities afforded by completion of your degree, you are likely reviewing the journey that brought you here. Like others before you, you probably came to AUSB because you wanted to make a difference and you wanted the knowledge and skills to take you into the future. You are now well prepared for that future and that preparation gives you the opportunity to live lives of purpose and to enter careers and professions that you choose. I know you have made sacrifices to get here. Some of you are the first in your extended family to receive an undergraduate degree or graduate degree. Others have completed your degrees not only while caring for yourself and for your children, but for elderly parents or other relatives as well. Some of you have faced significant illness, yourself or of those you love. You have had to balance many responsibilities to be here today. And so here you are, surrounded by your families, your friends, and the Antioch University Santa Barbara family. We are all gathered here today to honor you. Whenever I prepare to officiate at a commencement ceremony, I can't help but think back to when I started college. And actually, I think back further than that to something my high school guidance counselor once told me, that I was not college material. <laughs> I can still feel the physical response I had when I heard those words. My ears plugged up, my head felt hot, my heart started beating out of my chest, I grew up in the 50s and 60s, very different time than today. At 17, I was what you called a late bloomer, and I had no idea what I wanted to be. My mother never told me that I could do anything I wanted to be, to do. She told me I could be a nurse, not a doctor. I could be a teacher, but not a college professor. And if I chose to be a teacher, it was to be like her to have something to fall back on should something happen to my husband. My mother told me that I would marry my future, not make it. So imagine if I had listened to my guidance counselor's voice, the voice that reflected his beliefs. I would be living even today with the results. If I had listened to those words, I would not have taken any of the paths that presented themselves to me or that I forged. Now it is time for you to take your next path, whatever that path will be. Instead of listening to the voices who tell you that you cannot do something, do as our 26th president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt said, believe you can and you're halfway there. And as Dr. Seuss tells us, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. 
Do not let anything divert you from that path, although not everything you will do is perfect. Um, I can promise you that, actually. I remember um, what my Russian grandmother used to say to me. Now, I probably will mangle her accent, but so you'll have to forgive me, but she would say, Nancy, you will be too soon old and too late schmott. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> Even armed with your education and experience, you will make mistakes. Again, I can promise you that. Get over it. Don't be afraid to take, those, to take those paths because you fear making a mistake. I want to conclude my message to you today with words that have um, not actually been attributed to anyone that I can find but are, and are not my own, but I wish they were. I hope your dreams take you to the corners of your smiles, to the highest of your hopes, to the windows of your opportunities, and to the most special places that your heart has ever known. So, it's now my honor to change course a little bit and to introduce the recipient of the 2013 Award for Excellence in Teaching. Because the faculty member receiving this award was nominated and selected by her peers, it is indeed an honor to be chosen. The recipient of the 2013 Award for Excellence in Teaching, Dr. Don Alexandra Osborne. <laughs> now I'm going to cry. Let me finish that, let me finish, let me finish. <laughs> Dawn received her bachelor's degree in biology from UC Santa Cruz, her master's of science in marine science also from UC Santa Cruz, and in 2005 her PhD in ocean science from, the, from UCSB. Prior to joining our core faculty in 2010, Dawn's career has included teaching appointments at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, Marine Curriculum Development for the National Science Foundation, California Sea Grant Research, and in an advisory capacity to the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. It's obvious from the start of her training, Dawn has been committed to marine science and the protection of our natural world. And when you meet her, you are immediately struck by her exuberant exuberance. She bursts with excitement. And obviously, the response when I mentioned her name supports that. <laughs> Given her marine interests, a little while ago, I gave her a shell that I'd collected on Sanibel Island in Florida during one of our annual family trips while my children were growing up. I thought that she'd like it, but let me tell you, <laughs> I was not at all prepared for the thrill in her voice and the sparkle in her eyes as she began to tell me about the shell. I thought I already knew about it, but I sure was wrong. For from her reaction, you would have thought I'd given her diamonds. Dr. Don Alexander Osborne is a very special educator and scholar. <clears throat> since coming, excuse me, since becoming AUSB core faculty in 2010, she developed and launched our undergraduate concentration in environmental studies. She is the force behind our environmental film series, and she has electrified her students in, in her, her students in her classes that are always filled, and they have all tromped off all over Santa Barbara with her on field trips. Dawn 
in commemoration of this occasion, can I ask you to come up here now? Okay, yeah, let me, let me finish. In commemoration of this occasion, in addition to a bag of shells, all of which are from Sanibel Island. <laughs> it is my honor to present you with this beautiful plaque and a gift. And the plaque reads, Antioch University Santa Barbara Award for Excellence in Teaching, presented June 21st, 2013, to Don Alexandra Osborne, PhD, a teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn, is hammering on cold iron, Horace Mann. Please join me in honoring Dr. Don Alexander Osborne, recipient of the 2013 Award for Excellence in Teaching. Thank you so much. I'm already crying. Okay. I'm incredibly honored to receive the annual award for excellence in teaching. As you know, Antioch is a unique learning environment with small classes. We get to know our students. So this recognition is particularly special for me and I accept this award. <sighs> with thanks and appreciation for my devoted faculty and staff colleagues. As I stand here today and see you all with your caps and gowns and your beautiful smiles and your family and friends behind you supporting you in your amazing triumphs, I am grateful to share this journey and this day with you. We are also very proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, sometimes it feels like you're my kids, not my, <laughs> not my students. I'm so proud. Uh, today is a very special day. Not only are you graduating, but today is also summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So today we experience the longest daylight of the year, yes, and the sun takes its highest pathway through the sky. So for many reasons, this day is worth remembering. I am a marine biologist by training. I teach sustainable business, environmental justice and advocacy and other science courses in the Bachelor of Arts program. I follow Albert Einstein's advice in my teaching. I don't teach my students, I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. As a child, I learned best in the outdoor classroom. I rescued brittle stars and octopus from kelp holdfasts. When I fell asleep, I dreamt of swimming with bat rays. And now I take my students to the butterfly preserves, the beaches, rivers, sloughs, estuaries, airports, <laughs> wherever we can go to see and smell the amazing life existing in all the diverse habitats on our planet. My goal is to create curiosity and encourage my students to love and respect our environment, as I have with my two boys. They are eight and 10. They're somewhere back there, I think. Oh, there they are, hi! <laughs> um, I, I have to acknowledge that, you know, we've had lots of family adventures. Um, we have entertaining stories. You could ask the BA students. 
<laughs> um, I'm going to spare you the gory details today, but some are worth a brief mention for some fun. Recently, my younger son wanted to catch a bat ray in an estuary we were visiting, and they were so fast, I thought, there's no way he's going to catch one. They're like lightning underwater. And it turns out he did. And uh, we were in the ER a few hours later, and every doctor and every nurse was coming up to him saying, I want to see this bat ray kid. I've never seen anyone get bitten by a bat ray. <laughs> and he responds, I was not bitten. I was stung. <laughs> of course, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, don't correct the doctors. Um, <sighs> And I won't forget the time that I took 150 first graders to the beach for an adventure. Some of my Antioch students were helping me. And their teacher said, all right, listen to Dawn and don't get Sandy. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, uh, I'm going to fail at this. Um, and I remember paddle boarding with my oldest son. And we, we swam into a, so we were paddled into a swarm of jellyfish. And he looked over, dove in, and said, Mom, I've got to get a sample. Get me a bucket. <laughs> We're out in the middle of the ocean. Um, I, I these, tell you these stories to remind you to find joy in your challenges, to appreciate your curiosity, and to laugh whenever possible. I have made my passion my life's work, as I hope you do. And this love keeps me motivated to learn more, to do more, and to see more. As an Antioch professor, I watch my students transform in science courses, from fretful to fascinated. It's a priceless gift to see your faces light up when you touch a shark egg case or hold a brittle star in your hands. I'm so proud. <laughs> Reluctantly, some of you have to take my classes. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, yet you always leave with a new sense of confidence and ability in yourself to persevere. I have had students who are afraid of being near ocean waves, and they leave a field trip with a newfound connection to nature. And when my students tell me that a class has totally changed their outlook on the environment and impacted their life in a positive way, or they won't use another plastic bag again, or when they see trash on the ground, they'll pick it up, when they go to a restaurant, they'll ask, where did that fish come from? How did you harvest that fish? Do you know? I know I accomplished my goal, imparting love and increasing the connection with our Earth. In the words of a Senegalese conservationist, we conserve what we love, we love what we understand, and we understand what we are taught. Today, this brightest day of the year, we celebrate your accomplishments, your perseverance, and your growth. We honor your efforts. Let yourself meander like a great river. Experiment along your way and seek your place. Take time to dance with the fog, sing with the trees, laugh with the waves, and blow kisses to the whales. Connect with the people and the land and the energy around you. You are the change we want to see in the world. Follow your passion, live your dream, enjoy your journey. Congratulations on this very special day. I love you all. Thank you, Dr. Osborne. In a few moments, the graduates will be announced. We know that everyone here in this room is eager to get a photograph of your graduate crossing the stage. For safety reasons, we must keep the aisles clear and ask for everyone's cooperation. We have reserved space for those taking photographs to stand on this side and just behind the graduate seating area, so in that open space. At this point in the ceremony, I would like to ask the BA 
students and the faculty to please come forward. So all the BA students, please come forward and the BA faculty. And the faculty, would you please come to the front of the stage next to Dr. Leffert. The following students are graduating from the Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies program. Sam Mimarzadeh. <laughs> Ashley Adams. William Mahoney. Thank you. Amanda Anderson. Julaine Barthelmes. Regina Griofsky. Thank you. Krista Michelle Falloon. Thank you. Gabriella Santonino. Marushka Bissetti. Luisa Barber. Ildiko Benyak. Marie Cheney. Thank you. Darcy Devon. Maria Dialba. Susana Del Toro. Thank you. Raina. Raina Halby. Hi, congratulations. Is it Lilia? Lilia Jimenez. Michelle Cass. Charity Hill. Camilla Carlson.
Ksenia Kolpakova. Katie Jean Lalone. V. Le. Heidi Mostaketti. Patricia Ortiz. <laughs> Ross Phillips. <laughs> Alma Leticia Prado. Natasha Quintero. <laughs> Diana Garcia. <laughs> Jessica Sepulveda. Alexandra Stedman. Hi. Hold on. Heather Stolper. Tanya Sandroff. Yeah. Yin Zhang. <laughs> Sylvia Terrell. Matthew Thompson. <laughs> Adam Copras. Tracy Huang. Anthony Rocha. Jordan Williams. Krista Brooke Borgers. Jeremy Runnels. <laughs> Paul Knight. Thank you. Alexandra Richardson. Alyssa Ann Walter. Nice. 
Shauna Burke. Yes, thank you. Brittany Gunther. Thank you. Courtney Cunningham. Yami Torres Cervantes. <laughs> Maria Estela Menares. give a round of applause for our Bachelor of Arts graduates. Before we take the next step, before presenting the candidates for graduate degrees, we will hear from our graduate speaker, Brandon Maynard, who is graduating from our MA in Clinical Psychology program. Brandon was chosen by a committee of faculty to present today uh, and speak with us and address the commencement audience. Brandon, come on up. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> oh, there's more of you than I thought there was going to be. Right on. Okay, well, congratulations, everybody. This is amazing. It's amazing what we have all accomplished here today. Um, my speech is uh, kind of reminiscent of something I did uh, a few months ago. Um, the Spartan is a figure of reverence and the epitome of the warrior heart. But some may, some may know what a Spartan is, some may not. Some remember them as 300 who held off a force of rumored one million. And uh, were able to fight back and uh, set a memory that long surpasses their, their life. Now, the Spartan had a persevering nature and commitment to each other that helped build this legacy. But they were strong because of their community not because of each individual soldier. Becoming a Spartan required up to about 10 years of training that started in childhood, but the lifestyle ended never. To become a Spartan, one would be taken from their home and they would undergo this long training process and only if they survived and came back were they considered a Spartan. Now, my colleagues, we have completed a long and vigorous training process filled with commitment, perseverance, papers, tears, and laughs. It's been filled with weekend courses, memorable little chestnuts from Andrew, jokes from Frank, <laughs> jokes from Frank that would make anyone blush, and the excitement of adding letters onto our last name. It's been filled with fishbowl exercises, or as some of my colleagues like to call them, shark tanks. <laughs> the anxiety of dyads and triads. Latte and espresso from French press. <laughs> Sleepless nights and papers that held more self-reflection than a mirror hallway at the county fair. <laughs> now we sit here at the end of another chapter that we endured through perseverance and commitment. Now look around you. This is the community that fostered our growth as a new student into something entirely different. Applaud these people right now. Family, friends.
honored staff and the sacrifices that were given so this can happen. Now what was school like? In December of last year, I embarked on what they called a Spartan race, a multi-mile multi obstacle run in the Malibu Mountains that challenged everything that I had. It began with 300 of us. At the rally of a gunshot, we spread through the mist. The cheer that started us all became silent. We were in another country, it seemed like, in a foreign land. And it begun what seemed for like an eternity. We climbed mountains, swam rivers, and thought, what did we get ourselves into? Send it another peak, and we came across someone who encouraged and discouraged us with the phrase, you're halfway there. <laughs> halfway to the halfway point. <laughs> Much like our academic obstacle course, it seemed far and hard. Our muscles ached, our minds were delirious. Started feeling lost in this journey, but there's something that kept us going, kept me going at least, and that was the phrase, keep on going. <laughs> so I kept going, remembering my community, and though I felt alone, I knew I wasn't. I got the rhythm of the course, went up another mountain, swam through another river, got knocked over by a gladiator, and before I knew it, I can see the finish line, much how we might have felt maybe a few weeks ago. I went down this muddy slope, leaped over a fiery wall, received a medal around my neck, and I looked to my left, and there's my beautiful wife and my gorgeous daughter welcoming me at the finish line. I completed it, but it was because of our community, it's because of my community, because of your community that we are this far. My friends, this degree is your medal, the people around you, your cheering community. You did not do this alone, but your own perseverance and strength had carried you through. Now what's next? Must catch our breath, feel the breeze of accomplishment blow through our hair, and stay with this feeling. It is real, it is done, and it cannot be taken away from you. Now where do we go from here? You leave this chapter, like me, a changed and grown person, but the growth does not stop. Like a Spartan, we must continue to strive and grow in our community with our gifts, education, support, and knowledge. Through our community commitments, we will continue to persevere, continue to succeed, and contribute to the community as servants and warriors. I look next to you once again. It is together that we will continue to commit and promote justice in our lives, justice in our environment, and justice in our society. Let's go now, my friends, into our beautiful horizon. Congratulations. Thank you, Brandon. With the education graduates and the faculty in the Department of Education, please come forward. Faculty, if you would come forward to the stage near Dr. Leffert. And students. The following graduates are graduating from the Master of Education and the Master of Arts in Education program. Caterina Cornejo. Allison Michelle Frederick. Taylor Greer. Hi, 
Abby Harmon. Bonnie Kwan. Carrie Linden. <laughs> Megan Murray. <laughs> Caitlin Rogers. Sylvia Rosinski. <laughs> Jennifer Kono. <laughs> Janae Wilkinson. At this point, I will ask that the graduates and faculty from the MACP, the Masters of Arts in Clinical Psychology program, please come forward. And the, the faculty. Are you ready? Yes. Tisha Aronson. Brandon. Very good. Brandon Maynard. Joseph Z. Westheimer. Cassie Bresner. Thank you. It's just a moment. Kelly Wildowski. Lindsay Hausen. <laughs> Natalie Long. Hi. Thank you. Edward Prada. Monica Ann Clipperton. <laughs> Andrew Nelson. Hi. Leah. Okay. 
Leah Byrne. Hi. Erica. Erica Berrigan. Betty Purify. Caballero Gillespie. Okay. Eliana Caballero Gillespie. Anna Flores. Hilda Higuera. Teresa Segovia. Very nice. Chelsea, yes. Chelsea, yes. Thank you. Chelsea Holmes. Hi, thank you. Lauren Scott. Jennifer Cox. <laughs> Haley Beckwith. <laughs> Marissa Thomas. Lacey Paulson. Okay. Jessica Aaron Mann. Christina Twitty. Kelly Thomas Goralski. <laughs> Jennifer Mundy. Esmeralda Escobedo. Maria Salomon Connie. Ileana Gellis. Ileana Gellis. Rosita Reyes Sanford. Hi, thank you. Yvette Arias. Yvette Arias. Thank 
Arilene Amaro. Marisol Valencia Rincón. Thank you. Alejandro Vasquez. Alejandro Hernandez. Hi. Very good. Heather Victoria Boyd. Heather Klein. Hi. Hannon? <laughs> Melissa Hannon. Hi. Lon, is it Lee? Lee. Yes. Lon Lee. Christina Medina. Hi. Amanda Frederick. Hi. Tasha Deacon. All right. Natasha Deacon. Katie Richards. Hi. Oh, yeah. Say it again. Rodebush. Thank you. Chris Rodebush. Julian Varela. Hi. And Gomez Ackerman. Thank you. Donna Gomez Ackerman. Jamie Bregante. Hi. Nice to see you again. Samantha Wicker. Brianna Nicole Tardif. Jacqueline Meisner. Carissa Campbell. Good. 
Nicole Kenke. Congratulations. Jenna Maiden. <laughs> Chelsea Moreno. Teresa Sanchez. Alexandra Sanchez. Megan Young. Hello. Very nice. Jess Elizabeth Smith. Elena Circa. Hi. Hi. Janine Murphy. Oh, thank you, Janine. Janine Murphy. Hi. Thank you, Womack. Okay. William Womack. Nisa King. Hi again. Hi. Dylan Marie. Dylan, yes. right? Yes. Dylan Marie Jacobson. Sonia Tinoco. At this point, we ask for the students and faculty from our Doctor of Psychology program to please come forward. The following students are receiving the Masters of Arts in Psychology on their pathway toward the Doctorate in Psychology. Chelsea Cameron. Hi, James. Congratulations. James Chavers. Laren Doggett. Yes. Crystal Gonsalves. Yes. 
congratulations. Megan Marie Kane. James Liston. Thank you, Cameron. Congratulations. Thank you. Cameron Fitzpatrick Zeidler. And we have one student who is graduating from the doctorate in psychology program. <laughs> Melissa Diane Cervantes. And I would like to read her dissertation title, Bringing Hope to Those Forgotten, Is the Provision of Transitional and Supportive Housing Effective in Reducing Homelessness? A Qualitative Analysis of Wilbridge of Santa Barbara. <laughs> Yes, please give a round of applause for the future Dr. Cervantes. So I have instructions here that say, wait for the room to become quiet. Thank you. As the Chief Academic Officer of Antioch University Santa Barbara, it is an honor for me to recommend the graduates for their degrees. Graduates, please rise and stay in your places. Madam President, Chancellor Noodleman, distinguished trustees, I present to you the class of 2013 and recommend them to you as candidates for the following degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies. Master of Education, Master of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology, Master of Arts in Psychology, Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology. And Dr. Leffert will confer the degrees. Thank you. Provost Lipinski, before I officially confer the degrees, I invite you, I want to take care of a little housekeeping, I invite you to join us for a reception in the Plaza del Sol, and out of respect for our graduates, please remain in your seats, friends, family, while um, we go through the recessional process. So. Without further ado, by virtue of the authority granted to me by the Chancellor and Board of Governors of Antioch University and the Board of Trustees of Antioch University Santa Barbara, 
I hereby confer upon these candidates the following degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies, Master of Education, Master of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology, Master of Arts in Psychology, Doctor in Psychology in Clinical Psychology. Graduates, please change the tassels on your caps to the left side. Congratulations to all of you. And our best wishes to you for the bright futures we know you will have.